This week we'll finish the rounded and backed bradle binding, the polar manual, and I'll finish the story too. Before we get started on the book, I'd just like to mention that I did open a Patreon account this week. I've had fantastic support over the last 18 months and 100 odd videos, and if you're able to extend that support to being a Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. We'll start by making the special pressing boards that will help make the French groove at the external joint. Now I'm going to use some 4mm knitting needles, which I'm going to use some blue printer's tape to attach to the edge of a board, and then I'll put some 1mm board on the surface of the wooden pressing board, which will help hold the knitting needle in place and also reduce the depth of the needle. So the 4mm knitting needle will produce a groove that's 4mm wide and only 3mm deep, which pretty much matches the thickness of the, of the boards or the covers of this book. So it's fairly straightforward. I've just taped the needle to the edge of the board and then I'll tape this 1mm grey board to the pressing boards. This design comes from one of Peter's articles. In the past I've often just balanced the knitting needle in the joints on the edge of a board and I thought it might be good to actually make one of these boards and see how it goes and it works really well. I have had brass bound boards before where a strip of brass is screwed to the edge of the board but those tend to be narrower than this. The width of the net, knitting needle and the shape produces a really nice French groove on the book. I've complicated the design of this book by deciding to inset these cloth patches that I got from the South Pole. The patches are about two millimeters thick. So I'm gonna make the cover boards out of laminated grey board. I'm going to use two millimeter thick board on the outer board and cut shapes that the patches will sit in and then back that with one millimeter grey board. So the covers will be three millimeters thick. So we start by working out what the height of the boards should be and roughly what the width of the boards should be. You don't need the exact width, you can wait until after you've put the case together and then trim the width based on fitting it to the book. But because I want these patches in the centre of the boards, I need to know roughly where the centre will be. So I have measured the width of the book, or what I think is going to be the width of the book, added 3 millimetres for the uh, squares, a head and tail on the fore edge, and so I've marked that on the boards, uh, positioned the patches, and now I'm going to draw around the patches. I'm going to add a millimetre around the patches, so there's a bit of space for the cloth to squish down into the, uh, into the holes, and then I'll cut those out freehand. So what I've done here is left a margin on what I think is going to be the fore edge side, and I'm assuming the face of the grey board that I'm marking up is the outer face. However, based on that, the uh, excess margin on both of these boards should have been on the opposite sides. So that was a bit of a, a mistake. And if it hadn't been such a pain in the neck cutting out these holes, I'd have probably have just uh, started from scratch but I thought I could salvage it and I thought that I'd added just a millimeter or, or so of excess on the uh, rough sizing of the boards so that I'd get away with it. In the end, my square I think was about a millimeter less than I'd have liked on the forage of this book. So I, I prob probably should have just started from scratch on these boards once I'd realized this mistake, but uh, I guess that is just laziness on my part. Once I've finished cutting these holes, I'll sand the holes to make them nice and smooth. 
Last week I was mentioning that I used to work on a project called IceCube, which is a neutrino telescope at the South Pole. And for a while I was hiring and managing the winter over staff. Typically there'd been a team of two working on the a telescope at the South Pole during the winter. At some point the telescope was expanding, we'd added a second telescope and I hired a team of three. For some reason that year with the team of three just didn't work out. I had a falling out with an old friend, the team didn't get along, uh, they didn't get along with me and at the end of the year we we're all sick of each other and I just didn't know why at the time. At the time, I didn't associate the issues that I'd had with the size of the team. I thought it was something that I'd done, that uh, I'd made a mistake, and uh, I was the manager, so if it didn't work out, it, it clearly is my fault. But I didn't think the issue was the size of the team. So the next year, I hired another team of three. We still had the same circumstances, and I hired one of my core team, a young bloke that was super smart, and a, a couple that I'd known for many years, Victoria and PJ. And when they started work, the first thing they did was give me a copy of this book, the US Navy's Polar Manual from 1964. I'd never seen this book before, and at first I didn't know why they were giving it to me. Now the insets are cut out and the boards are laminated together. I'll just clean up any excess adhesive and then I'm going to trim what I think is the spine edge of the boards. And really it's the fore edge. So this is my mistake. Uh, well the mistake was how I marked up the boards and I'm just compounding it now. But the next part is cutting the boards to height. So I've Measured the height of the book, added six millimeters for two three millimeter squares, and I'm cutting the boards to those height. I'll cut each board to the same height as well. What Victoria and PJ wanted me to see in the manual is on page 25. It says, in small parties, two men, because of their interdependence, will get on well together and will tend to overlook each other's irritating habits or mannerisms. A party of three, unless one man is experienced and is acknowledged leader, will end up with two men picking on the third for some quirk and there is almost bound to be trouble, unless all three are Scotchmen. They decided that I was very brave persisting with a team of three, or at least not hiring three Scotsmen. Now we'll put the case together by cutting a spine stiffener and a connecting piece of paper. So we need to measure the width uh, of the spine stiffener. So I'm going to measure the width of the spine from shoulder to shoulder at a few different points where it's likely to be uh, different thicknesses. Hopefully the thickness won't vary too much. Now I usually pick the middle thickness. There's usually only a couple of points, usually at the tapes, that's at the widest thickness and you don't want uh, excess material hanging over the shoulders. So I went with the 27 millimeters. I'm using the 0.3 millimeter thick manila card for the spine stiffener. Of course the grain direction should be head to tail. Uh, if it's not you'll end up with uh, creases in the spine. And I can cut cut it to the correct height later, so I don't need to cut it to height right now, just the width. And you really do need it quite parallel, the sides. The connecting piece of paper is 60 millimeters plus the thickness of the book. I actually always cut it significantly larger. I think that is about 120 millimeters wide, and I'll trim it up later. Glue out the spine stiffener, and eyeball it and get it roughly in the center of the connecting paper. The connecting paper I'm using is Permalife, but you can use 
any strongish paper. Photocopy paper is just fine as well. And then I'm using a bone folder to really define the shoulders on the uh, upper side of the paper. Now I will trim the paper to 30 millimeters away from the spine stiffener and my larger ruler is 30 millimeters wide so it's a perfect width gauge for uh, trimming the paper. Now I will trim the connecting piece to the correct height so I'll true up one end with a square and then I'll trim it to the height of the boards. The next step is to attach the boards. So the question is, how far away from the spine stiffener do you connect the boards? Now for most books, roughly this size, using cloth or paper and 2mm boards, 7mm works really well. And then you adjust from there. Now the boards are significantly thicker in this case, so the material will end up pushing down deeper into the groove. So I'm going to adjust that up slightly and I'm using 8 millimeters. So I'm with a sharp pencil I'm drawing a line 8 millimeters away from the spine stiffener. This isn't an exact science and anywhere from 7 to 9 millimeters will probably work. 10 millimeters the boards may end up being a bit sloppy. The only issue is that I have you will notice trimmed up the width of these boards. Now if the boards were still uh, wider at the fore edge then I would have more room to move. But I did dry fit this to the book and realized that I didn't have much margin of error on the fore edge. So I'm gluing out the connecting strip up to the pencil line and then I will put the board down right on that pencil line. I'll use a long ruler to make sure everything is lined up. And I'll make sure that I've got the front on the front and the back on the back. And I almost got it wrong again. So what's special about Scotsman, or Scotchman as the book says? Apparently, if all three are Scotchmen, uh, they will form a St. Andrew's Society and harmony will reign. Even parties of four will usually get on because they will pair off and balance their banter. Despite this new piece of information, the team of three that year ended up doing really well and finished the year all getting along well and still talking to me. Now it's time to fit the case to the book. And if I hadn't already trimmed the foredge, now would be the time to do that. To help it fit the case, we should put a round in the spine stiffener, which is easily done over the edge of a bench. Using the special pressing boards, I'll put everything together and see how it fits. And it looks pretty good, though there's not quite enough curve in the spine stiffener. So I'll just add a bit more uh, curvature to that on the edge of the bench. And after I've done that, I'll try again and everything will fit together really nicely. And as I said, now would be when I would trim up that fore edge of the boards. But as you could just see just then, that was uh, just a little bit short of probably what was ideal. So we're just going to leave it. But normally that would be the time that you would trim the foredge of the boards. I've demonstrated that in other videos, but what you do is just use your ruler to mark out three millimeters away from the edge of the text block. Just prick it with your knife and then um, open the book back up and trim it. Okay, now we're going to cover the case with the cloth. I'm just going to position it make sure that I've got enough material. I don't need to glue the turn-ins at this point, so I'll mark the size of the board so I know where I have to glue out to. And then I'm going to glue it out with PVA. Stippling adhesive on cloth helps get the adhesive 
into the weave of the cloth and it also helps produce a nice uniform layer of adhesive over a large area. Placing the boards on the cloth is a little bit tricky because you want to start at one end of the book, work the cloth down into the spine area and then up onto the second board. So I'm positioning the first board and then I'll flip it over, use my bone folder to work the cloth down into the spine area, across the spine stiffener and then up onto the second board. I also had to work the cloth down into the cutouts. This cloth was left over from a bookbinding business that went out of business, someone retired. And it's a bit unusual to work with. It, it sort of becomes really stretchy when it's wet. However, at the same time, I couldn't get it to stick down into these cutouts. I had kept the pieces that I'd cut out to help do this, but that wasn't working either. I had trimmed them up a little bit so that they there was a bit of space to fit down in the holes, but it just wasn't working. So I decided the solution was to glue the patches in into place and put it in the press for everything to dry. It was a snap decision, uh, but I, I think it, it worked out quite well. Unfortunately, the back of the patches have that heat set adhesive on them so that you can iron them onto clothing. Um, I didn't know what to do about that. I just decided to leave it and it did stick on okay, though it did squeeze out a little bit of adhesive which I cleaned up with cotton wool buds. I was sure that front patch was on level, uh, but afterwards I realized it was a bit crooked, but you can hardly notice, so I can live with that. If it was something that I couldn't live with, a bit of moisture, and I'm sure I could uh, lift that patch off and then reapply it. Now I'll use my 20 millimeter trimming gauge, 15 millimeters would work as well to trim up the turn ins. Then I'll trim the corners, one and a half board thicknesses away from the corners. And since these boards are quite thick, that'll be a good four millimeters. So it will look like a long way away from the corners, but it is because of the thickness, the thick boards. And then I will turn in head and tail and then four edge. Now we'll put the book in the case and hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, everything fits.
And thanks to my mixing up the front and back boards, the four edge square is just a fraction less than I'd have liked. But short of remaking the case, there's not much can be done about it at this point. And really, I'm probably the only person that's going to notice this. It has been suggested that I could do a video on using foiling presses. The only issue is that just about every single foiling press is different. Even foiling presses of the same manufacturer have been modified and are all different. I will just quickly show how I use this new foiling press that I've got on loan. It's a John Marshall. It's a very small one by Marshall standards. I am using a large font for the titling on this book. It just looks right and is what I want. The Marshall is a little bit old fashioned in that it lifts the table instead of lowering the chase onto the work. Uh, I think nearly all the modern machines uh, lower the chase down onto the work. I think the hardest part is making sure that you get the stamping in the correct place on the cover. Now I have a trick that I use for positioning the cover on the foiling press and I had intended to video that and I set up the camera and everything and then I forgot to hit the record button. So I'm just going to show a token reenactment and I'll save that for another day. So I'm using a blue metallic foil, which I think goes with the color scheme. So I have a piece of tracing paper that I've already stamped on that I use to help position the case. And then I stamp it uh, and job done. Casing in can be a bit of a tricky operation and it's right at the end. Everything's done. You just need to put it together. Can, so it can be a little bit stressful as well. So there's a bit of a trick called um, hanging the book in at the shoulders, which just makes it a little bit easier. So I'd put the book in the press with the special boards to just get the cover to get used to its uh, final shape. And then I put a little bit of, of adhesive, PVA adhesive, on the shoulder of the book and the edge of the boards. So I start on the lower side of the book and then I position that and then I will do the other side of the book. So just a small bit of ad adhesive along the shoulders and the edge of the board. And then I can close it up, make sure the squares are correct and then put it in the press and let it dry for about 10 minutes. If the squares aren't correct at this point, I can pull the boards off without doing any damage and I can start again. If you glue out the paste downs completely, especially if you're using PVA, you're pretty much committed. But this just gives you an opportunity to uh, take a step back and, and restart if things aren't going well. So I'm going to put the second board on, put that in the press and just leave it for 10 minutes. Then to finish casing in the book, all I have to do is glue out the rest of the paste down and close the book. And I don't have to worry about the squares not being correct. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to hit the record button again. So there's not much I can do about that. I can't even really do a reenactment. But I have done this on a number of other projects, so hopefully that is fairly straightforward and you can imagine what I did. It's quite irritating. With this thick paper, I used straight PVA to case in. However, for thinner paper, you might like to use mix. And if there's any wrinkles in the paper, then you can lift it up and then smooth it down. The other thing I did was tip at the fore edge the first free end paper with the first white. And that means you won't be able to see the reverse of the decorative paper. So I put that in the press for 10 minutes and then I open it up on the bench 
to let it dry. And then the next day, once I've cleaned up a little bit of stray adhesive, the book is completed. Here you can see the end paper configuration with the decorative paper tipped to the first white paper, just so that I hide the reverse of decorative paper. The only other thing I think that you missed was that I did trim about a half a millimetre off the paste down just to counter the stretch. So that's the project done. I think it's worked out fairly well. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. If you're in a position to do so, I'd really appreciate the support on Patreon. Hope everyone's taking care. And until next time, cheerio.